Welcome to the video. In this video, a simulation on the failure and damage of unidirectional composite is presented. Abacus built-in damage model for fiber-reinforced materials, including hashin, is only appropriate for plain stress conditions like shell elements. However, for three-dimensional geometries, you cannot use Abacus built-in damage model. Instead, you must use user material subroutines. In this example, I show you how to use a free-to-access user material subroutine to model failure and damage of unidirectional composite under tensile loading in Abacus. You can access to the user material subroutine file from our website. Let's see how it works. In this session, we want to simulate tensile loading on a thick unidirectional fiber reinforced composite plate. For thick plates, we cannot use shell parts, instead, we have to make a three-dimensional parts. Therefore, for simulating the damage in a thick composite plate, we have to use user material subroutine. According to ASDM D3039 standard, length and width of the composite plate are 250 mm and 25 mm, respectively. Thickness of the composite plate was considered to be 5 mm. We can partition the part to determine the grip areas and also gauge length, so we can apply proper boundary conditions on grip areas. In the case of thin unidirectional composite plate and plain stress conditions, you can also use Abacus built-in hash and damage model, which was discussed in our previous videos. In Abacus software, at first a three-dimensional deformable part with the length of 250 mm and the width of 25 mm was designed. Thickness of the composite plate was considered 5 mm. Now, let's define the property of unidirectional composite plate. In property module, at first, number of solution-dependent state variables must be defined. These variables are values in user subroutines that evolve with the solution of an analysis. According to the comment section of the user material subroutine, 10 state variables are required. This user material subroutine is prepared based on the proposed damage model by Linda et al. According to their proposed model, two types of damage, named as fiber damage and matrix damage, were considered. Therefore, first two state variables are for progressive damage in fiber and matrix phase of unidirectional composite plate. Then, you must select user material option from the general tab to define mechanical properties of composite plate. In this section, material properties of fiber reinforced composite must be defined completely, including elastic constants, strength values, and fracture energies. The order of entering values is of great importance and must be in agreement with the user material subroutine. The order of entering values is visible in the user material subroutine file. For example, first value is Young's modulus in the longitudinal direction, while second value is Young's modulus in the transverse direction. From 1 to 6, you must enter elastic constants of composite plate. From 7 to 11, you must enter the strength values of composite plate. From 12 to 13, you must enter the fracture energy values for matrix and fiber, respectively. And last input is viscous regularization parameter, which improve the convergence of analysis. Be careful that large values of this parameter can cause considerable delay in the degradation of the stiffness. For this video, mechanical properties of unidirectional carbon epoxy composite was entered with the same order as user material subroutine. Note that this free to access user material subroutine can be used for both two-dimensional and three-dimensional problems. You can access to this user material subroutine freely in our website. Since anisotropic material was defined, material orientation must be assigned to the composite plate.
In step module, general static step with time period of 1 was defined. Initial increment size was set to 0.05. At step module, you can also request field output parameters, which are related to the user material subroutines. For this user material subroutine, you can activate scalar stiffness degradation and also solution dependent state variables. So you can plot them later in the visualization module. Upper section of composite plate was defined as set with the aim of requesting history output of displacement and reaction force along the longitudinal direction. So we can plot each versus time and combine them to get force displacement diagram. You can observe the loading and boundary conditions for performing the uniaxial tensile loading. A displacement equal to 3.25 mm was applied to the upper section of the plate. All degrees of freedom of the lower section of the plate was set to zero. In the mesh module, mesh with the size of 3 mm was defined to discretize the part. As last step, a job file must be created. Since we are using a user subroutine, we must enter the directory of the user subroutine file in the general tab. Now, we submit the job to solve the problem. As you can see, the job was aborted due to the convergence problem. Not a big problem. Let's see the results. You can plot the S11 stress contour for unidirectional composite plate to observe its distribution. Now, let's plot the force versus time curve. First, click on the results item on the main menu bar, and then select History Output. Then, select All Reaction Force and save them as the summation of all. As you can see, Tensile Force experienced a sharp reduction due to damage initiation and evolution. We can also observe the fiber damage distribution in composite part. Since fiber damage is stored in the first solution dependent state variable, we must select SDV1. To better visualize the damage initiation and evolution, we can reduce the number of contour intervals to two. Similarly can be done for the matrix damage, so we must select SDV2. Thanks for watching this video. If you found this tutorial helpful, please support our team with subscribe, like and comment. And visit our website.